Hello and welcome to today's edition of Your Questions Answered with Father Gruner. I'm John Veneri. We take your questions, you send them to us via email. Uh, we answer them, we talk about them, and continue, please, to send us those questions. You see the email address at the bottom of the screen, questions at thefatimacenter.com. Here's a question we have from someone who says, why do various Protestant denominations claim that we have to be born again? Well, first of all, our Lord himself uh, in sacred scripture says, unless, it, unless a man be born again of water and the Holy Ghost, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. I think that's in John chapter three, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, now, the, it's not the Catholics don't believe that, they do. The difference is the interpretation the Protestants put on it. We have, you know, we've had 2000 years of Catholic church history and questions have come up over various issues over the ages. And uh, I just put a new book out and we can perhaps talk about that. About, but anyway, the church has the power to define. As St. Paul tells us and St. Peter, the church is a pillar and ground of truth. The church itself is the one that did indicated which books of the Bible are authentic and yeah, which ones are the not. The church gave us the Bible. the Bible. And so for example, the gospel according to St. Thomas is not part of the Bible because the Catholic Church says it's not part of the Bible. Now, whereas you know the gospel according to Luke, who's not even an apostle, is part of the Bible because God works for him to, to write the gospel and give the inspired word of God. My point here though is that the meaning of these words, of course, left to the definition of the church the church is defined, there are seven sacraments. And we're talking about here the sacrament of baptism. So a person to be baptized is described, is a person either has, is cleansed with water, you, in the Western rite, usually it's done pouring water over the head of the child. At the same time, using the words of our Lord, I baptize thee in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And those are the words used as a priest is pouring the water on the head of a child or an adult for that matter. Uh, and that's baptism, and that is what is to be born again. We are born the first time when we're born of our natural parents, we're born of our mother, and we have natural life. When we receive, or even why the Lord uses born, is because we get supernatural life. We get sanctifying grace. Sanctifying grace is what St. Peter tells us in his, uh, his epistle, I think it's in the first chapter, I wish I would remember it was the first or second epistle, but in which he says that we participate in the divine nature. Mm -hmm. Now that's so, by being born again, we become godlike. We're not gods, we're not part of God, but we become godlike as a quality by having sanctifying grace in our souls. As I've heard and read, I've read it in spiritual books that one we could be tempted to adore the soul of a baby if you could see the soul of a baby after it's baptized because it's so godlike. And this godlikeness is what St. Paul, St. Peter calls a participation in the divine nature. And this is infused in the soul. This is what we be now not only have natural life, I mean, I can move my hands around, I can speak and so forth, but the natural life I received from my, my parents. But I, I have, I can supernaturalize all this by receiving the grace, the sanctity of my grace of baptism, washing away original sin and replacing what was, replacing original sin with, act, with sanctifying grace. And this grace, is a new life, and that's why we are born again. And that's yes. what even the Second Vatican Council, not that I quote it very often, talks about the fact that the Blessed Virgin is our mother because she generates us into the life of sanctifying grace. And of course, that's, they're just repeating what the church has been teaching forever, but it's, it's a, a place that, so we are born again. But the Protestants put a whole different, and of course, I'd like to say not all Protestants, as, as is mentioned in the question, yeah. not all of them hold this thing, of course, some of them, but some of the, the charismatic people, so according to them, you're born again by the eighth sacrament of somebody putting their hands on your head, then you become born again. That's not, that's, that's, that's not, nowhere is that anywhere in the context of scripture, and nowhere is in the understanding of, the, of this passage for 1800 or 1900 years. Well, also uh, Protestant, uh, there's uh, uh, some Protestant de denominations will uh, put together things that our Lord did not put together, that basically to be born again for them means I accept the Lord as my personal savior. Well, that's and what we I do. acknowledge I'm a sinner. I need a, I need a redeemer. I acknowledge Jesus as my redeemer. And once I do that, even if I do it in a supermarket, you know, waiting line, at that point, I'm born again. Well, of course, that's what the, but again, the whole thing is that when we are baptized, I mean, as an adult, we are doing that. We are saying, you know, 
uh, just like the, the uh, eunuch of, with Philip, saying, okay, he had the scriptures explained to him. What does it prevent you from being baptized? If you believe with your heart that, you know, you, and, and that, you, that you're receiving it. So that's what we're doing when we're being baptized, is we're, we're accepting Christ. Now, as a child, just as an infant, without, the, without free will, the difference is that without free will, we received original sin. I mean, I wasn't there when Adam, I was there in potentia in Adam and Eve, but I wasn't there personally, but their sin affected me without my will. And, and similarly, I can be, have that reversed and even better by having myself baptized uh, while, I'm, while I'm an infant. Uh, so, but for adults, they have to accept Christ as their savior to be baptized. They have to recognize that they're, they're sinners that's mm -hmm. part of, you know, as Saint Paul, Saint James, John says, if you don't, if you don't recognize that you're a sinner, then you're li you're a liar, and it's not the truth is not in you. So, uh, we're all doing that when we're baptized as adults, and when we're baptized as children, uh, our our parents are doing it for us. God parents, uh, yes. God parents. So, uh, but you go ahead. I don't. Yeah. Mean, no. What I was uh, pointing out is uh, the the other part of this, of of this, uh, uh, the Catholic teaching on sanctifying grace through baptism and giving this new life is. All seven sacraments mirror, St. Thomas Aquinas talks about this, mirror our natural life and, yeah. gi and give us the means. In, in, in the natural order, we have to be born. So in, in the, the supernatural, supernatural order, uh, we're, we're born again in baptism. Yeah, in the natural yeah. order, we need food. So in the supernatural order, we feed our soul with the Holy Eucharist. With in the natural Lord. order, we have to have our wounds healed. Yes. And in so the supernatural order, we have confession. Yeah. We go right down all seven yeah. sacraments. You know, yeah. in, in the natural order, we have to have governance and yeah. we have to propagate the race. Yeah. And the supernatural order, we have the priesthood. Governance. Uh, governance of supernatural things. And then the propagation of, of children by means of the sacraments. For the, pur for the purpose of getting to heaven. Yes. And in the natural order, we have to grow to maturity. Yeah. In the supernatural order, we grow to maturity through, the conf through confirmation. Yeah. And then, of course, in the end, we die. Yes. And there's a special sacrament for that too. For the passage way to the next life. Yeah. So you know that full uh, explanation that's given by Saint Thomas, uh, I think, gives us a better grasp of this life to be lived. Yes. That is the supernatural life that we get through baptism. Yes. That we get through the second birth, as it were. Yes. 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 So that's why they, they 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 take that phrase, but they take it out of context and they have it mean something else entirely. Yes. Than what Christ meant and what. Churches yes, because Saint Peter did talk about those uh, who wrestled the scriptures to their own destruction. Yes, and John Salza, who has done a study of this, he says that I, I don't know the Greek word that's done for uh, that's used for a destruction, but um, he says it's used four times in scripture that Greek word, and every time it means destruction. Yes. So, uh, so it's it's a, a serious thing uh, to misinterpret scripture according to our own lights. Well, especially when it's contrary to what Christ intended and what, what, and what the church has always taught. So uh, that closes this program for today. And hopefully, well, not hopefully, we plan to have another program for you tomorrow. Thank you.